If you're looking for some cool bling that'll make you want to raid a monastery, check out today's sponsor, Viking Jewelry. They've got some really badass designs, rings made of bronze or silver or even gold if you want to flaunt your inner Jarl, various bracelets, necklaces with a variety of different designs, and they also got a few really cool t-shirts. Lots of potential for stylish Yule gifts or any other occasion really. So check it out, there's plenty to choose from. The links are down below and they already contain discount codes for 35% off all pendants for 48 hours and 20% off the entire store for 10 days. Those of you who have been subscribed for a while may remember this thing here, which I designed a couple of years ago. It was made by Roy Rudd, who gave it the name Grim Grin. And uh, I don't think I've ever made a video discussing the features. So <laughs> let me show you its features. So I wanted to design a cross between a saber, a messer, and a yatagan, basically. So it has the, the knuckle guard like a saber. It's got the nail guard that you would find on a messer. It's got the recurve blade of a yatagan. It's got a sharpened false edge here for cutting with. And uh, then I decided to give it this hooked pommel here. So the idea is I wanted something that is as versatile as possible while also being very effective as a cutter. And the idea for the recurve blade came to me when I tested the panabas hey. from traditional Filipino weapons, which cut surprisingly well. I mean, I shouldn't really say surprising, but uh, I did some tests on a padded jacket and uh, a number of other blades couldn't really get through it. And then the recurve blade of the panabas just sliced clean through. There is something to be said about the slicing power of a recurve blade. As it's drawn through the target, the belly of the blade will make the edge dig more deeply into the material. So with this, you don't even need to perform a pronounced slice. If you, if you do a straight hewing cut, this will still have the same effect. And I designed the blade so that the point would still be aligned with the grip. I don't know how well you can see that, but basically, if you look at the sketch here, you can draw a straight line from the hilt to the point. So that means it's effective for thrusting as well. So you can do, perform a completely straight thrust with it, but you don't need to do much to align it. But at the same time, because there is a curve in it, there's still some potential for it to reach around the opponent's guard, as I've shown here. Originally, I designed it with a thumb ring, the way you see on Polish sabers, which is neat because it gives you a little bit of extra control with the thumb here. But that turned out to be a bit more hassle than it was worth to get it right, so we just decided to skip it. And with this guard, I mean, you can still do it to an extent. You can still put the thumb on the guard here for a little bit of extra control. So this can be used either with a hammer grip for powerful but shorter reaching cuts, or it can be used with a handshake grip with or without putting the thumb on the back of the grip here. And this is where this curved pommel comes in because the advantage of the saber grip here is that it gives you more reach. So you can perform a cut like this and this is just extra insurance that it stays in your hand. For defensive options here, you've got the nail guard on the side here that allows you to catch incoming strikes on the flat and thrust at the same time. And it's also just some extra passive hand protection. It doesn't protect as well as a full basket hilt, obviously, but it also doesn't add as much weight. I wanted to try to hit the sweet spot between maneuverability and cutting power, meaning that I wanted the, the balance to be far enough back and the saber to be light enough overall to be quick. So you can see this is where the balance is. It's not extremely close to the hilt. It's overall light enough that you can easily use quick disruptive cuts but you can also commit to it and really deliver devastating hewing cuts. And that it sure does. It has been tested against a zombie head and it didn't take much effort at all to chop into it. 
Basically, I was trying to combine the benefits of single and double-edged as well as straight and curved, as contradictory as it is. But that was basically the idea. It is strongly curved, but it's still aligned with the hilt, so kind of straight-ish in that regard, if you look at the point and the hilt in relation to one another. And it's double-edged, but only to a certain point. So here you've got the sharpened edge on the back, but this is still a blunt spine. So you can still use this, you can hold on to it and uh, use this for slicing in close quarters and uh, half sorting more easily this way. The tips of the guard are somewhat pointed, which is mainly for aesthetic reasons, but this could also be potentially used uh, offensively. Overall, I'm very happy with how it turned out. By the way, if you are a writer or fantasy artist, feel free to use this design. I don't claim any copyright on it because it's really just a hybrid of historical designs. It's just taking a bit of this, a bit of that, and a bit of that, and just throwing it in a blender, and this is what he come up with. So this could have existed in history somewhere. I don't think it did, but uh, yeah, it's, it's basically just an amalgamation of existing designs. So it's not like a genius idea by any means, but please with how it turned out. It works really quite well. It's very nice work. Uh, I'll link the, the website of the maker down below if you're interested in commissioning something. Anyway, I figured this deserves a bit more attention. Hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.